WWE Hall of Famers The Undertaker and Kevin Nash possibly take shots at All Elite Wrestling on social media. Tony Khan promises more major announcements to come for All Elite Wrestling in 2023. We have finally a premiere date for the new AEW All Access reality show. Jungle Boy vs. Christian Cage at AEW Revolution now has a new stipulation added. The latest on EJ and Duca after AEW offered him a contract. Keith Lee opens up on his new look that he recently debuted on AEW television. Britt Baker mocks Maxwell Jacob Friedman after recently splitting up with his fiance. Kenny Omega reflects on his exploding deathmatch barbed wire fiasco two years ago at AEW Revolution in 2021. Omega also speaks about the AEW Women's Division and Aubrey Edwards opens up on her role in All Elite Wrestling. Hey guys, welcome back to Wrestling News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of All Elite Wrestling, especially as we're just 24 hours away from AEW Revolution 2023 live on pay-per-view. But first, we have to start off talking about two WWE Hall of Famers possibly taking shots at AEW on social media. Now, WWE Hall of Famer The Undertaker, yes, the dead man, the phenom himself, has reacted to a Twitter interaction involving Kevin Nash appearing to fire a shot at AEW. Now, following a photo of a bloody Ring of Honor Pure Champion, Wheeler Utah circulating on Twitter, one user shared the image to react to those who have compared Utah to Stone Cold Steve Austin at WrestleMania 13 during the iconic finish to his legendary match against Bret the Hitman Hart, where he was passing out due to blood loss. Now, wondering what Stone Cold would think, the user tweeted, quote, Imagine you're Stone Cold on your ranch, drinking a Budweiser, scrolling through Twitter, and you see this being compared to you. Kevin Nash then replied to the message, claiming that Steve Austin doesn't watch AEW TV, saying, quote, Don't worry, he ain't watching. The Undertaker, seemingly he was amused by this reply, then tweeted, quote, Huge pop, end quote. Now, the dead man's reply has been liked by over <laughs> liked by 7,300 times as of the recording of this video, more than the original tweet and Kevin Nash's reply. The post has also been retweeted and quote tweeted more than the other two posts. Now, Undertaker recently spoke about his own locker room experiences, explaining how he'd handled the situation if he was made to work with a talent that he didn't like. Undertaker, of course, is doing a lot more interviews nowadays. Since retiring from in-ring competition, he was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame last year during WrestleMania 38 weekend. Is it a surprise that two staunch WWE guys are going to take shots at AEW? No, probably not. Kevin Nash, I think he's been fair at times to AEW and WWE. The Undertaker, he signed a 20 billion year contract with WWE, so what's he going to say? Now, is it really taking shots at AEW or is it being honest? I'll leave that one up to you. But certainly, as one would expect, social media is going crazy over The Undertaker seemingly taking a shot at All Elite Wrestling. Now, speaking of AEW, the president of AEW, Tony Khan, has promised more major announcements to come in 2023. Now, while most are staring at the clock, counting down the seconds until they can head home and enjoy vacation on Friday, AEW Tony Khan was sitting at the clock, counting down the minutes to AEW Rampage later on in the evening. And this isn't just any ordinary Rampage. Of course, last night's Rampage was the lead in to the countdown to Revolution immediately after the show, followed by AEW Revolution this coming Sunday, tomorrow night live on pay-per-view and understandably Tony Khan was very excited about all of the events going on this weekend and when Khan get exci gets excited he tweets which he did again on Friday afternoon to hype up the big weekend as well as some other things to come either during or after Revolution or just later on this year. Quote, this is one of the best weekends of the year. AEW Revolution Sunday in San Francisco and Friday night's AEW Rampage and then the countdown to Revolution tonight on TNT Khan tweeted. 2023 will be the biggest year yet for AEW. I have major announcements coming soon that are important to AEW and our fans. Now, after a long period of a few announcements, Tony Khan brought them back last week, revealing that AEW would be debuting AEW All Access, a reality-based TV series sometime in March. We do have more details on that later on. He didn't specify what these other announcements could entail, though there is expected to be movement on certain AEW projects, such as the video game AEW Fight Forever, a show in the UK later on this year, and of course the upcoming AEW New Japan crossover Forbidden Door pay-per-view later on this summer. So more announcements are coming. Now, 
some people are suggesting that last week's big rating had something to do with the major announcement that was advertised for that show. But in reality, it was due to the lack of NBA competition. In fact, Tony Khan's major announcement last week was actually the lowest rated segment of the show. So I'm not necessarily sure it's a rating deploy that's working anymore. But Tony Khan is saying expect more major announcements to come as the year goes on. Now, speaking of this major announcement last week, of course, it was AEW All Access, AEW's latest and new reality show. Now, last week on AEW Dynamite, founder Tony Khan's important announcement was revealed to be the AEW All Access reality series. Adam Cole made the announcement on Khan's behalf, saying, quote, you're going to get an unfiltered look at AEW like you've never seen it before. And trust me when I tell you, this is something you're not going to want to miss. Now, TBS has released a trailer for All Access, which states that the show will premiere on Wednesday, March 29. The trailer features backstage footage of Khan himself, as well as Britt Baker, Ruby Soho, Sammy Guevara, Adam Cole, Kenny Omega, and the Young Bucks. Not only does the new AW reality series debut that night, but that night we'll also see Adam Cole's in-ring return. Last week on Dynamite, he stated the same night that AW All Access debuts live on Dynamite, I'm going to make my in-ring return. Cole, of course, hasn't wrestled for several months after suffering a serious concussion at the Forbidden Door pay-per-view back in June of last year. At the time, the injury was considered to be potentially career-threatening. That night, he was on the losing end of a four-way match involving himself, Hangman Adam Page, Kazuchika Okada, and Jay White for the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. Cole has yet, uh, has yet to win any gold since debuting for AEW in September, but he did win the Owen Hart Cup last May at Double or Nothing. Now fans know they're less than a month away from Cole's in-ring return. Here's hoping he can pick up right where he left off and stay healthy. Of course, this time, because of this all-access show, he's going to be presented as a babyface for the first time in AEW moving forward. Now, tomorrow night at Revolution, we'll see Jungle Boy, Jack Perry, face off against Christian Cage. It'll be Cage's first match since All Out last year. Christian Cage has been embroiled in a heated feud with Jungle Boy, Jack Perry. One that's turned deeply personal, with Cage making countless comments about Jack's deceased father, Luke, who passed away in 2019, early uh, aged 52 years old. Cage's last match was a tainted victory over Perry at AEW's All Out pay-per-view back in September. At Revolution this Sunday, they'll finally have their rematch, though it won't be any normal contest it's going to be a fight but friday night on rampage perry added more a specific stipulation to the match quote after everything you have done to me there are going to be consequences grave consequences he declared Perry then said Sunday night will be Cage's final burial as he intends to put him in the ground. At All Out last September, Cage got the better of Jungle Boy following a heel turn from the former tag team partner Luchasaurus. That match that night only lasted 24 seconds, but rest assured, Sunday's bout is sure to be a fair bit longer than that. Despite having not won any gold with AEW, the former two-time WWE World Heavyweight Champion has been working steadily for Tony Khan ever since his debut in March of 2021. As for Jungle Boy, Boy. He's held the AW World Tag Team Championships one time alongside Luchasaurus and has also emerged victorious from the Men's Casino Battle Royale at Double or Nothing in 2021. Most recently, he's coming off a victory over Brian Cage on the February 15 episode of Dynamite, needing just over seven minutes to pick up the victory. Of course, he said that this year, in 2023, he will win singles gold in AW, something that Christian Cage said this past week on Dynamite he's going to do everything in his power to prevent. So... It raises the question at some point because we see Christian Cage win a singles championship and then finally drop it to Jungle Boy. Maybe that could happen. Now, what's going on with EJ and Duca? Well, EJ and Duca does have a standing contract offer, but that doesn't see, uh, seem to be his only option. Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful Select reported in early January that Nduka's deal with Major League Wrestling was up as the calendar rolled over into 2023. The Wrestling Observer reported several weeks ago that following Nduka's appearance with All Elite Wrestling, that a deal was offered by the promotion. Now, Fightful have been able to confirm that was indeed the case, but not that the deal was accepted by Nduka. Instead, they have heard that he's been evaluating all of his options. Part of that evaluation has involved some contact with WWE, but Fightful haven't heard of what extent that contact is or was. James Kimball, who was helpful in reaching out to some prospects, of course, was let go from the company and caused some adjustments to that aspect of things. In addition, Fightful have been told there has been heavy interest out of Mexico and Japan, with one Mexican company offering a contract as well. So the latest is... He hasn't signed anywhere as of yet, but certainly there are a lot of interested parties and a lot of offers on the table that indeed he is considering taking, with AEW being one of them. 
Now, Keith Lee recently returned to AEW television, sporting a bit of a different look, his more natural look, if you will. AEW star Keith Lee has revealed what inspired his new look following his return to television. Lee made his comeback on the February 17 edition of AEW Rampage, showing off what appeared to be his naturally white hair. Speaking on Fightful's Grapsity podcast, Lee noted he wanted to encourage people to be comfortable in their own skin. Opening up about his appearance, Lee said, quote, This is definitely the same Keith Lee that left, all right? The Keith Lee that left left is actually not the entirety of what Keith Lee is. I think what inspired that look or return and all of that, I think in my previous interview, the exact terminology was I used was a giant middle finger to society and a lot of companies that want you to need to look like a lot of people that tell you what you need to look like. Instead, I decided to say, okay, here's reality. I've actually made statements about this in the past. I saw my first gray hairs at 16, which means they were coming in long before that, right? I want people to be comfortable with who they are. Now, don't get me wrong. I want people to be their best versions of themselves, but not at the expense of their natural looks. While I want to take care people to take care of themselves physically and do what they can to adhere to their health, things that sort of, I'm going to be the trendsetter that says, okay, naturally gray hair, white hair, however you view it, I'm going to be the one who sets it off. Because I am who I am, and I don't really care what people say or think about me. I am going to be successful doing this. I'm going to change the game once again. That's what I I always do. That's what it's really all about. Now, Lee returned to the ring on last night's edition of Rampage, teaming with Dustin Rose to defeat Parker Bordreau and Swerve Strickland of the Mogul Affiliates. It had been rumored that we were going to see Keith Lee versus Swerve Strickland at Rampage, but as of right now, the time of recording, a match hasn't been announced, but there still is time. However, it does appear to be unlikely at this point. Britt Baker has taken shots at MJF on social media. It's unknown whether it's a work or a shoot, but the AEW roster isn't really shying away from commenting on MJF's personal life, specifically his revelation that his fiance has left him. AEW star Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, recently took a shot at the AEW World Champion's relationship issues on Twitter. The social media exchange between MGF and Baker stemmed from her appearance on the Wrestling Podcast. After being asked by host Brandon Walker if MGF will ever shut up, Baker said the American Dragon Brian Danielson defeating MGF at AEW Revolution this Sunday might just do the trick. Quote, there's a small chance then we won't have 30-minute MGF promos every freaking week, a hopeful Baker said. Like, my brain is melting here in all of these weird stories from when he was a kid. Like, what is wrong with this guy? The champ was none too pleased be the uh, good doctor's comment and had a message for her boyfriend Adam Cole quote keep your girl in check baby he tweeted Baker responded in kind by continuing to blur the lines of reality saying quote worry about your own girl she quote tweeted oh wait shit now, Baker isn't the first to twist the knife when it comes to the current state of MGF's love life, as Danielson referred to MGF's fiance leaving him on this week's AEW Dynamite. It was a big angle to close out the go-home episode of Dynamite before the pay-per-view this Sunday. If MGF split with fiance Naomi Rosenblum is a work, the two are paying uh, attention to the detail. After rumors spread that the engagement was off, Rosenblum started to sell all of her remaining artwork she had available of MGF. But as is the case with anything with pro wrestling, whether it's a work or whether it's not who even knows at this point now two years ago it was aw revolution 2021 in an empty or mostly empty dailies place because of the pandemic and one of the most anticlimactic finishes in the modern history of wrestling happened in march 2021 at aw revolution when kenny omega and john moxley battled in an exploding barbed wire death match unfortunately the match won't be remembered for its incredible spots over the 25 minutes but rather the ending which was literally a dud speaking about the explosion that didn't go off omega joined joined Moxley's wife Renee Paquette on her podcast The Sessions detailing what it felt like to have the match ruined by the lackluster climax. The former AEW World Champion talked about how things sometimes don't work out the way you picture it heading into matches but he was proud of the fights he and Moxley had prior to the end. Despite being worried about what could happen during the match Omega mentioned that he never considered what would happen if the explosion failed noting that the explosion worked out fine in rehearsals. Quote it never popped into my mind that feeling that thought Omega said you just think that the stuff you can't control is going to be there for you. I'm trying to worry about what I can do to cr control the unknown. The thing I can't control is any sort of technical aspect of the match. So I'm just trusting that all of these people have the know-how and have been tasked to do this. They can pull it off. 
Now, of course, again, it didn't really happen <laughs> that way. Uh, AW Revolution 2021 emanated from Daly's Place in Jacksonville, Florida, an arena that was a half roof allowing air from outside to come in. Omega stated that because of the arena's unique design and the day being windy, he thought that was the reason the explosion didn't go off until later figuring out that the person in charge of the explosion made a change just prior to the show's main event. Omega said the boss of the explosion crew did not attend rehearsals and showed up with a different idea of how to make the explosion go off. The new idea misfired and Omega said he wished that they would have just done what we practice. At the time, AW owner Tony Khan said the storyline reason for the botch was Kenny's master plan being built as a dud. Omega said he walked backstage after the match and wanted to hide his emotion from others until he got in front of the young bucks or people who have seen me at my worst. However, Omega revealed he didn't get the chance to let out his emotion as AW produced and coach Jerry Lynn stopped him from doing anything he'd regret. Quote, so I remember being on my way to the back and I saw Jerry and he kind of sprinted up beside me and said, Kenny, don't do it, man. I know you're pissed off, but don't do it. Omega recalled. I said, Jerry, I don't even know what I'm going to do. I feel like crying, man. He said, no, it's okay. Nothing you did wrong. I'm pissed off too, but hopefully you don't blame anyone in the match. That was kind of the most upsetting part in that moment is, I don't know who's to blame, who's at fault, Omega said. I felt so terrible for John, for Eddie. I even felt sorry for myself. I was like, man, do we look like sorry saps? It was nice just to sort of, as best as I could, scrub the finish and just think about how uh, we did our day's work. Look, look aside from that technical flub. I was like, you know what? I really liked it. I really did. And it sucks that the last part is what is going to stick in everyone's mind. Omega closed the conversation by stating the experience made him want to rely on as little people as possible moving forward, particularly when it comes to matches. And again, it's one of the more infamous finishes in AW history, isn't it? It was it, it was really, really something else. If you haven't seen it, man, go and watch it because it's, again, one of the most anticlimactic finishes ever. And again, it was nobody's fault in terms of the match, but yeah, it was just, oh, and it could have been so spectacular and it just didn't end up being like that. Omega also spoke about the AW Women's Division progress in the same interview. Omega detailed um, about seeing Trish Stratus. When he first saw Trish Stratus, he noted how few talented stars to work with compared to women's wrestlers in Japan, and he wanted to see the epic clashes he saw there replicated on American television. The former AEW World Champion said clashes between uh, Maniami, Toyota, and Aja Kong showcased a passion in the ring that was different, bringing something extra that you just didn't see from the male counterparts. Uh, Omega feels in today's wrestling landscape, fans are eager to watch shows with equal representation because women's stars are just as dedicated or more so than the males to becoming stars. He thinks there's been a bit of complacency from AEW's male stars, knowing that they're going to be the focus of the show, despite not earning the spot. Quote, and it's like, no, you guys got to be careful because they're coming for you. And not only that, they deserve your spot. Now I feel that we uh, earned that trust. There are people we have to convince on the business end of things as well that this is a proven thing. This can be successful and that people want to watch it. We have proven that, yes, people will like it. People want to watch it and it is good. Now, Omega believes the AW Women's roster hasn't reached its potential yet. Satan they can continue to push forward and build off their momentum. He feels like they've looked like absolute superstars and couldn't be happier for those who have stuck with AEW from the beginning. On the February 15 edition of Dynamite, Ruby Soho defeated Britt Baker and Tony Storm in the show's main event, a position that they were thrust into at the last second. Omega respects talent being able to show up to the arena without knowing what's going to happen and then being thrust into the main event spot and doing the best they can. Quote, one thing that I respect more than anything, part of the process that the normal person may not be keen to is that when we show up to the arena and we don't know what the card is, we may know that we'll be performing, but for the woman to show up and be like, oh, by the way, for the first time in forever, you guys are going to be the main event. And it's kind of like, whoa, I'm going to be the main. And it's like, yup, do or die. This is your big chance. You screw up. It sets the whole division back because we can't trust you to be the main event anymore. There's so much pressure. That is so much pressure. Now, as far as what's going to happen with the women's division next, of course, at Revolution, uh, AW Women's World Champion Jamie Hayter will be defending the championship against Soraya uh, this coming weekend as well as Ruby Soho as well. A big match certainly set for the Revolution pay-per-view. Finally, Aubrey Edwards opened up about her role in AEW. Some people may not know, she's not just a referee when it comes to All Elite Wrestling. Uh, once again, the latest episode of The Sessions involving Renee Paquette has opened up with Aubrey Edwards about her dual role in the company. She said, quote, I do wear a lot of hats, Edwards told Paquette. My official title is I am Senior Project Manager. I know that sounds very singular, but obviously I have a lot of projects I manage. Specifically, that includes games 
gaming projects, AW Heels, and whatever else may come up, like her co role co host co hosting <laughs> AW Unrestricted Podcast. Someone got a hold of my resume at one point and went, Wait, she worked on games for like 10 years? Yeah, okay, so I'm working in AW Games, which is our sort of games umbrella, and I'm working on a number of games for them right now that I can't talk about. Um, she spoke about, again, having all of these different roles and titles in AW. Certainly an interesting listen or watch if you haven't seen it already. But there you go, guys. It's latest AW news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe button right-hand corner. Remember, you can join the WN365 roster by clicking that join button. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.